the information you need to start your morning. This is TMJ4 News Today. And good morning, everyone. You are watching TMJ4 News today on this Monday morning. Thanks so much for being with us. I'm Susan Kim. And I'm Ryan Jenkins in for Vince Petrano. Adriana keeping an eye on the roads. And Marissa is with the Storm Chaser this morning. Marissa, what's going on? We are here in Wauwatosa this morning because we are going to be in the 4th of July parade here. Now the parade starts at 9 o'clock, so we are a little bit early, but I can tell you no one's really here. This is the staging area if you are in the parade, so we're the first ones here for that. Again, I think we deserve an award for that because we had to be here at, you know, 4 o'clock or so in the morning. But down North Avenue is when there's a lot of people already. Chairs are out, people are out, and people were actually out before 4 o'clock this morning. I couldn't believe it as I was driving down North Avenue uh, as I was working my way here. We are looking at breezy conditions. Winds right now at about 15 miles per hour. We're almost up to 74 here at the Storm Chaser and we are looking at mild temperatures today and gusty winds. This is a look at our winds right now. Now they're wind gusts. Winds right now are between about 10 and 15 miles per hour, but gusts have been closer to 20 miles per hour. As we move later into this morning, gusts will be closer to 30 miles per hour, which will be just in time for this parade. And that might be a good thing because it's going to get hot. Right now, again, we're in the 70s. It's a mild start, but temperatures will quickly climb by the lunch hour. Looking at temperatures already into the 80s, pushing 90 degrees, and we are going to see 94 for our high temperature today, which is two degrees warmer than what we saw yesterday in Milwaukee. But after today, it gets cooler. I am tracking some shower zone and chance for thunderstorms. I'll have a look at that coming up in just a bit. Adriana. All right, thanks, Marissa. And take a look at traffic this morning. Traffic is picking up just a little bit out there, but it's still very light than what we typically see for this time of day. So no issues across our interstate system. We saw earlier crash uh, this morning, but those have cleared, so there are no crashes across our interstate system, so things are looking really good. Let's take a look at some drive times. If you're traveling from Aguanago to the Hale Interchange, that's a 14-minute commute. Franklin to the 894 bypass, you're looking at about seven minutes, and from Hale to the Zoo Interchange, that's a four-minute drive. So overall, we're not seeing any problems if you are traveling out the door soon. All right, Adriana, thank you. Breaking news this morning, an Amber Alert has been issued for a two-year-old boy. Aiden Hall was forcibly taken by Renato Hall, according to police, while Renato was armed with a handgun. And Milwaukee police are now saying he should be considered armed and dangerous. Renato fled in either a silver Acura TL or a black Cadillac with California license plate 6XZY488. Take a look at your screen if you can right now. This is a photo of Aiden, the missing toddler. He's described as three feet tall. He weighs 38 pounds. He has black hair and brown eyes. He was last seen wearing a white shirt with lettering on the front and blue jean shorts, along with orange and white Jordan shoes. The suspect, Renato Hall, is a 20 year old man. Please say he's six feet tall, 180 pounds with black hair and brown eyes. Again, he fled in either a silver Acura TL or a black Cadillac with California license plate number 6XZY488. If you know anything about Renato or Aiden, please contact Milwaukee Police at 414-935-7360. That number is on your screen right now. It's now 633 also this morning. Milwaukee Police are investigating several shootings after last night, and one of them was fatal. Police say an 18-year-old was shot and killed near 26th and Burleigh. Officials say they do have a person of interest, but the shooting is still under investigation. A 14 year old girl was shot in the left shoulder in a separate shooting that happened near third and Concordia. Police say they currently have no suspects in custody in that shooting and it remains under investigation. And then Milwaukee police are reporting two other people were shot in separate shootings yesterday as well. Switching gears now to our Bucks coverage and chasing a championship. Today is a federal holiday, but it is all work for the Milwaukee Bucks. The team is in Phoenix today preparing for game one of the NBA Finals. A big crowd sending off the team from Milwaukee Mitchell International Airport last night. Now this morning, the Bucks are expected to release tickets for a standing room only section at Pfizer Forum. And that's where we find our Sarah McGrew live this morning with the impact the finals are having. Hi, Sarah. Good morning. Yes, it will be a big economic impact. Visit Milwaukee estimates that there will be a $4 million generated for each home game. Now, that will mostly go to restaurants, bars, and hotels. Bucks President Peter Fagan is hoping that extra boost helps the city bounce back from the pandemic a little quicker than otherwise expected. And while this championship run is big for business, 
It's also a monumental for the team and fans who haven't experienced this in nearly 50 years. The rush to buy tickets for the once in a lifetime experience is on and you can expect to pay. On StubHub, the cheapest resale tickets right now for Sunday's game in Milwaukee are just under $600. If you don't want to pay that much but are still hoping to get in the doors, the Bucks are releasing standing room only tickets this morning at 10. But no matter where you watch, there's definitely a sense of community in supporting this team. It is the definition of building community. You know, how do you get diverse thought, diverse people? How do you build it around? And that's why sports is so great because the dichotomy of sports is unlike anything else. It's about the passion. It's about the human beings. And like to be that catalyst to bring everybody together is, is just great. And if you don't want to pay to be in the building, the Deer District is free and always is a great time. Back to you. Sarah McGrew in uh, the Deer District. Sarah, thank you. And so let's take a look at the NBA final schedule against the Suns. The first game of this series is tomorrow night. Both game one and two will be in Phoenix. Then the series heads back to Milwaukee, back home. Game three and four at Pfizer Forum next Sunday and Wednesday. This morning, we still don't know whether Giannis will play in the first game or in the series at all against the Suns. The Bucks MVP injured his knee, you'll remember, last week in game four against the Atlanta Hawks. He sat out games five and six, hoping to rest up before the Bucks head into the finals. So we'll wait for updates on Giannis' status this week. Absolutely. 636 now, some beautiful fireworks last night. This is from one of our tower cameras. If you miss the fireworks, don't worry. The 4th of July fun is not over yet. There will be fireworks at 10 different Milwaukee County parks tonight. For details on that and a full list of other events happening today, head to TMJ4.com. It's now 637. Crews in Surfside, Florida have now demolished the remaining section that was still standing of the Surfside condominium building ahead of Tropical Storm Elsa. But rescuers say the search for remains will continue. Only 24 bodies have been recovered, over 120 people still unaccounted for right now. NBC's Jennifer Johnson has the latest. The last part of the Surfside condominium building has been demolished. That section came down ahead of possible high winds from Tropical Storm Elsa. But officials say this will create a bigger debris pile, increasing their chances of finding more remains. Bringing down this building in a controlled manner is critical to expanding our scope of the search and rescue effort and allowing us to explore the area closest to the building, which has currently not been accessible to our first responders. Rescuers promise the mission to find the missing will intensify as crews try and stabilize the rubble ahead of the storm. We are, of course, continuing to monitor Tropical Storm Elsa. Uh, it will cross Cuba and end up approaching Florida, uh, likely sometime Monday afternoon uh, or evening. On this day when millions of Americans are celebrating, there's more work and heartache here. This is not an Independence Day like any we have ever experienced before. After over 10 days of searching, there is still no closure for so many families. The video is all I see when I close my eyes, because um, to me that's, that's the moment I'm watching my mom and my grandmother die. And now at least six rescuers have tested positive for COVID-19, complicating a difficult mission even more. Jennifer Johnson, NBC News, Washington. Other top stories we are following this morning. We want to tell you more about Tropical Storm Elsa, which could dampen search and rescue efforts, as you just heard, at that collapsed Florida building. That Tropical Storm Watch is now in effect for South Florida. Forecasters say parts of South Florida could experience tropical storm forced wind gusts above 40 miles per hour. President Biden declaring a state of emergency in Florida to make it possible for the state to receive federal aid. And today, the man behind Amazon will step down. Jeff Bezos will hand over control to Amazon Web Services Chief Andy Jacey. Bezos chose today as the day to step down because it is the 27th anniversary of the launch of Amazon's online bookstore. Bezos leaves Amazon as the world's richest person. Forbes estimates his fortune at $202 billion. His net worth was about $6 billion when he first appeared on the Forbes list of richest Americans. That was back in 1998. Coming up on TMJ4 News today, young local golfers spending their holiday weekend helping others find out how much money they raise to help fight childhood cancer and for junior golf programs. 
And breaking down your Super 7 day this morning, we are looking at hot temperatures again this afternoon. 94 degrees for the high. It's breezy this morning. It's going to be breezy all day. Tomorrow we have better chance for some showers, maybe a thunderstorm. Also some tonight. I'll have more on that coming up in just a bit. Wednesday, isolated showers, a chance for thunderstorm. Back to the sunshine on Thursday and for most of Friday before we have a chance for a couple of showers to sneak into Friday, though more of that's on the way for next weekend. Cooler air, though, coming in after today. But again, I'll have more on this chance for showers and maybe a thunderstorm later this evening coming up in just a bit.